Soft Wash TV, what's the deal? I hope you guys are doing all right. It is a Monday morning right now. I already washed two houses for the day. Just picked up some bleach and it's lunchtime, guys. So let me try to zoom in for you. I can't zoom in. Let me turn this around. Y'all already know what time it is. Chipotle time. Whenever I'm in this area around lunchtime, I get so happy because your boy loves Chipotle. So I'm about to get some food in me and we're going to get to it. But first we need to feed the machine. Guys, I've been craving Chipotle for a minute. Let's slide up here to this counter and start ordering our bowl. I'm gonna show y'all what I get. First, we're gonna get some brown rice. All right, guys, now I'm a expert at this. So get the brown rice, get the pinto beans. You gotta have the pinto beans. Onions and peppers. My boy right here was a little, you know, conservative with the peppers. He should have laced me up a little bit better, but we're gonna half and half some chicken and then we're gonna get some carnitas. Gotta have the carnitas. Now we're gonna slide over here to the salsa. Go on, give me a dollop of that mild salsa, sir. Four for four. And then we're gonna get the salsa verde. And for you gringos, that means green salsa. Little bit of sprinkle of cheese. And then we're gonna come on over here and finish up. We're gonna top her off with a little bit of lettuce. All right, guys, I got the goods right here. I just wanted to say, since when did Chipotle get so expensive, guys? It ain't hurt my pockets, but I'm just saying. $19 for a bowl, and I didn't even get double protein. I did half and half chicken and carnitas. And I got a small chips and a water, y'all. A bottle of water. $19. Crazy. All right, so the point of the video is I wanted to jump on here, and I wanted to talk about uh, six or seven things that are holding you guys back, holding guys back from having a more successful year. I see a lot of guys just getting started making these mistakes. And I see guys that have been doing this for years, unfortunately, making a lot of these same mistakes too. So let's talk about it. Six or seven things that are holding you guys back. I'm going to eat this Chipotle and I'm going out there getting after it. Like I said, two more houses today. We roll it. All right, guys, I'm about halfway done and I know why they're taxing our ass on this Chipotle. This food is good as hell, y'all. Every time I have Chipotle, I'm like, yeah, this is hitting. This is smacking. All right. Kicking this off, guys. Number one. And these are in no order. Doing too many services. Doing way too many services, guys. And I get it. You want to get all the jobs you can, get all the money. But try to focus on what you're good at and what you got into this industry for. Whether it's soft washing houses, uh, uh, roofs cleaning driveways, stick to what you're good at. I see a lot of people kind of spreading themselves too thin and doing all types of things to try to get money. So I see guys getting into this industry and then they're paver sealing experts and then they're oxidation removal services and then they're staining wood decks and staining fences, dryer vent cleaning, Christmas lights, Guys, and all these jobs can make you more money, but whenever you kind of do all of these things, then you're more of a jack of all trades. You're like a handyman almost, rather than just pressure washing. So I noticed, and I'm guilty of it, guys. I used to do like oxidation removal on gutters, and I'd be out there with my little brush, brushing these people's gutters and stuff, getting oxidation off, and I'm just like, what am I doing? I should be on someone's roof right now making $1,300 on a roof job. Instead of this $300 for this thing. So my point is when you do all types of services, you know, you might be more profitable if you would have just stuck with what you're good at. And then whenever you do all types of things, you might get a reputation of being more of a handyman than, you know, actually being a wash company, guys. So just food for thought. All right, number two, branding. The lack of branding is one of the biggest mistakes you can make and I know, I promise you, I promise you, it is holding you back from getting more leads and getting more jobs every year. People choose not to brand because they're trying to save money. Like I said, I was just at the place where I get my sodium hypochlorite. As I'm leaving, I saw another vehicle pulling in. No branding whatsoever, nothing. I don't know the company name, the phone number, the website, if they even have a website, nothing. Because they didn't have anything on their vehicle, nothing on their trailer. And from the looks of it, they didn't even have personal branding on their clothes. So by ch by choosing to go cheap, by choosing not to brand your company, you're missing out, guys. Whenever I'm in town, I can't tell you how many times I've been at a gas station or I've been at 
Lowe's Home Improvement in the parking lot and people come up to me and they're like, man, I see your trucks everywhere. And I have to tell them, it's just me. You see me driving around. And they're like, for real? They're like, I see your logo everywhere. If, if you're out there, guys, and you're branding, people will recognize your website. People will recognize your company logo. People will recognize your clothing. And you'll build that reputation that garners respect in your community. So branding, don't be missing out. Don't go cheap. Spend the money and brand your vehicles. I think a vehicle wrap was single-handedly the best investment I've ever made for my company. So, and that's only 1500 bucks or 2000 bucks. Nothing. What's up, everybody? Before we continue, just a friendly reminder. Make sure you check out Softwash TV Pro, the exterior cleaning industry's answer to the need for quality pressure washing and soft washing training. Not only will you learn about safety, but we will teach you how to wash. Learn from a pro the ins and outs of house washing, concrete washing, and low pressure roof cleaning. We teach wash techniques and preventative measures for property protection. Softwash TV Pro will educate you about industry equipment and all of the chemicals used during daily operations. Learn marketing strategies from a successful pressure washing company and take advantage of numerous resources that will help you start and grow a pressure washing company. Thanks for watching. Now back to the video. All right, guys, number three, then I got to get some fuel. I'm at the gas station and wash for the rest of the day. We'll pick this up this evening back at the shop. But number three is habits, guys. A lot of people have shoddy ass habits and I know what's holding you guys back. Guys, if the shoe fits, choose to wear it. Let this resonate, embrace it and choose to do better guys. I'm not perfect by any means, but one thing I know is if you show me a man's habits, I'll show you his future guys. Have y'all ever heard that? It's a real popular saying and it's true. If you choose to have good habits and they're non-negotiable every day, your likelihood of being successful is going to go way up. If you have crappy habits and you run those habits in all day, every day, you're going to be a bum. You're going to be dumbfounded in a few years and be like, damn, I didn't, I didn't reach any of my goals. People like this probably don't even have goals, but choose to do better and align your daily habits with the outcome that you want. If you want to be successful in this industry, choose good habits. Me personally, just my habits, I wake up every day early, non-negotiable. I self-develop, I read books, I work out, I go running. That's non-negotiable, guys. And I just stack wins all day. I take that person to business, and then I do the best that I can in business. And in the evening time, I'm still productive. I'm not choosing to be comfortable and just sit on the couch and watch TV all evening. I'm doing things that are gonna move the needle in my business all freaking day. All of those habits are non-negotiable. That's why I personally feel like I'm doing very well in my business. It's because of my habits. If you choose to be comfortable in your cozy bed all morning instead of waking up early, if you choose to eat junk food and drink soda all day, you're probably going to have some soft ass top ramen body with tits as a man. Come on, guys, do better. If you're choosing to just get sloppy drunk and drink beer and liquor every day in the evening and that's your daily habit, bro, do you really think you're going to be winning at any high level, at anything? Probably not, guys. So just choose to do better. Think about what your daily habits are now. What can you tweak and improve on and set yourself up for success by implementing a foundation of habits that are aligned on the outcome that you want. Let's get it. Number four is playing it safe. Did you really get into business to play it safe and not take risks? I know a lot of guys that are failing to execute on things that they know they should do right now. They're just procrastinating and procrastinating and putting it on the back burner. But you have to take risks. You have to spend money. Scared money don't make money. I know a lot of people in this industry and I do a lot of coaching calls and I talk to people that are new to the industry and people that have been in the industry for a decade almost. And one common thing that I see is people are scared to spend money. They just want to save all their money and think that they could get by by word of mouth or the occasional Facebook post. But to be real, to be honest, you have to take risks and you have to reinvest into your business. You can't be scared. You can't sit in that comfort zone forever. So whenever it comes to doing things like spending $1,500 a month on Google ads or $2,500 a month on Google ads, when it comes to spending $3,000 for that new machine that you know you need that's going to make you more efficient, stop procrastinating. 
Stop being scared. Take the risk and see it through. Now, I say see it through for a reason because I've talked to a lot of guys that go spend money on yard signs and then they put them out and as soon as they get stole by your competition, people are like, I can't, spend, I can't put no more signs out. I can't afford it. Or they go and they spend that thousand, two thousand dollars on Google ads, right? And they don't get the leads that they wanted. Then they're like, I, I'm never doing that again. The problem is you probably paid some dude that has no clue what he's doing to do your ads. So just do your research and stick with it. You know what I'm saying? You have to stay in front of uh, customers and you have to get in front of them multiple times. So stick to your marketing and trust that it's going to work. All right, guys, number five is raising prices. Why are you so scared to raise your prices, guys? Everything's going up in this world. I know you see it. I just went to the gas station earlier and filled up my diesel. Prices are through the roof. Went grocery shopping the other day. Bought some chicken thighs, some steaks, some jalapeno peppers, some other vegetables, some water. Bam, my bill was like $350. How does that happen? Inflation, guys. Everything's going up in price and everyone's well aware of it. So why are you still charging the same thing that you've been charging your customers every year? You got to get those numbers up. This year alone across the board, I rose my prices by 15% across the board. Will I lose some customers because of, because of it? Absolutely. But I don't even mind because the cheaper customers that I have, a lot of times they're the ones that give you the most headaches. You're going to gain quality customers whenever you raise your prices, guys. And if this makes you uncomfortable, let's sit here and unbox this for a second because I was in that same position too. I would look at some of my estimates and I would look at these numbers that I'm charging customers and I'd be like, dang, man, this is kind of expensive. That really held me back for like one or two years in my business. I'd be like, $450 for house wash, $600 for this driveway, man, they ain't going to pay that. They are going to pay it, guys. You have to get out of this broke mindset. You know, I grew up, I didn't have a ton of money when I grew up. So I'd look at these numbers and I'd be like, there's no way they're going to pay. But let's be honest, guys. A lot of these customers out here have a lot more money than you or I have. They have these multi-million dollar houses. A thousand dollars to come out and wash stuff at their house really is just a drop into bucket, in the bucket to them. So you have to have that type of mindset. You have to have an abundance mindset, not a scarcity mindset. All right, guys, number six, and then I'm going to call this a day. I still have to prep my truck for tomorrow. I have to go put out yard signs. I have all these goals. Like I said, non-negotiable daily habits that I haven't finished today. So we got to wrap this up. Number six, this one resonates with me because it pisses me off when I see people falling victim to this. I hate it. So it's the fear of what other people think about you. This is holding some of you guys back. If it is or if it has ever held you back, hit that thumbs up button for me. Hit it anyway if you're this far in the video. Let me know you're watching. Let's talk about it. Maybe you're that guy who wants to start his pressure washing company, but you're scared about what people may think. Maybe you got a really nice job. I was there. I'm college educated. I have a college degree. I used to work for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I was on a team of 16 dudes. We went to every nuclear power plant in the country and designed terrorist attacks. And then we tested them in physically in force-on-force -force drills to make sure they could withstand a terrorist attack. Yeah, I thought about it whenever I was like, I'm going to quit working in the nuclear industry and go spray bleach on houses. But I, at the end of the day... Screw everybody. I wanted to do what I knew would make me happy, what would give me fulfillment, and being my own boss was that, guys. Nobody else is paying my bills. They're not paying my mortgage, so F them. What's another thing? Maybe it's yard signs. Maybe it's uh, clip flyers. You're scared to do clip flyers, throwing the clip flyers in people's driveways because you're scared to get called out for lit littering. Once again, why are you so scared what people are going to think? It's going to generate revenue for you. That's what's important. Stop worrying about all these people. Are you going to get called out once in a while? Absolutely, but own it. Keep it moving. Keep grinding. Facebook. How many of you guys are posting on your company page, but you're scared to consistently post on your personal page because you're scared that you're going to continually blow up these people's timelines with your pressure washing photos? F these people, man. If they don't support, half of these people don't even support you anyway. They don't like your post. They don't share your post. So why are you so concerned about what they think? Keep doing what is best for you. I was talking to a guy. I had a coaching call the other day. $30,000 this dude financed on a pressure washing rig. Has no jobs. 
has no marketing budget whatsoever. No money for marketing. He's like, what, what should I do? I said, bro, you need to take one of them three pressure washers that you have and sell it and get like $3,000 and then immediately put that into marketing. You'll get, your, you'll get your machine back down the road. He's like, I can't do that. People, people will think I'm a failure. Fuck them, people. Fuck them, people. Do what you know is best. Door knocking. You know how many doors I have had slammed in my face, guys, doing door knocking? It is the worst feeling ever to like to be like, man, these people think I'm just some bum out here begging for jobs and stuff like that. I don't give a damn anymore, guys. I don't give a damn. I'll go up, I'll get a door slammed in my face, and I'll diddy bop to the next house with a smile on my face and get the next job, guys. Abundance mindset. Stop worrying about what people think about you. I had another coaching call where this, this dude's killing it, but I do these lunch and learns. I don't do them all the time, but I, I don't have no problem talking in front of people. And I, I asked him, have, have you done a lunch and learn for like a property manager or a construction company? Basically where you host lunch, give them a 10, 15 minute presentation about your company. He's like, man, I'm, I'm scared to get up there and talk. You know, I'm scared to look dumb. That fear is holding you guys back. Break yourself of that, guys. I don't know what you need to do. Stand in the mirror. Practice talking in the mirror. Practice filming yourself and posting yourself on Facebook, guys, and advertising. Do what you got to do, but stop being scared. Stop worrying about what people think about you. YouTube, for me, is the biggest example, guys. Do you know how many dumb... I don't get them. I don't get them all the time, but every once in a while, I get some dumbass comment from a hater, and I just laugh. I sit and laugh my ass off. I don't even respond to these dudes because I, they were trying to, they'll they try to get a rise out of you by saying something real stupid, and they want you to respond because they want access to you. I'll just laugh and ignore that shit, and that, they can't stand that. But do you think I would be filming YouTube videos if I cared what people thought about me? I don't give a fuck what nobody thinks about me. Not nobody. I guarantee on this video, whenever I was talking earlier about like people eating shitty food and having tits, that triggered somebody. Instead of seeing that I'm calling them up, they took it as I was calling them out and they got pissy with me and they'll probably stop watching my channel. I had a dude one time where I had a, bu I had a video where I was talking about buckets, how to make a sprayer bucket, literally said the name of every part that I that I had. All you have to do is say, go on Google and type in the name of the part that I specifically said, and you'd find every part on Amazon. Some dude said, where's the parts list? I said, I'm not holding your hand. Just type it in on Google. He said, I'm unsubscribed and you're a dick. Do you think I give a fuck if someone unsubscribes because they think I'm a dick? Anybody that is hating on you guys, no matter what you're doing, they're hating on you because you're at a higher level than they are. Ain't nobody hating on somebody that's doing less than them. So think about that. If you're watching my video right now and you've came on my channel and said some dumb shit, do you know how stupid you look? Honestly, do you know how stupid you look? You're a grown man hating on another grown man. Not because I'm doing worse than you, because I'm doing better, guys. Let that sink in. So stop worrying about what other people think about you. I love you guys. Keep grinding. Keep kicking ass, guys. If you need some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I got that link in the comment section, link in the video description. And if you haven't joined my team, my program, check out Softwatch TV Pro. I talk about things that will help you grow. I talk about training, all types of stuff. Check it out. I got to get out here, get my truck ready for tomorrow. And I got to go out here and put out 25 yard signs tonight because I said I'd do it. And I don't break my word for nobody. Let's go!